Okay, uh, welcome everybody to our May 3rd Teaching and Learning and UX Working Group call. Um, we, we have several items on the agenda today. We're going to be looking at some new features from S2U. We have a demo of Backchat um, from NWU, and then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about specifications grading in Sakai. Uh, so uh, if we have time left over, we'll try to get to Jira, or, um, but we'll kind of do that on a, um, you know, as needed basis. If we get there and we have some time left, we can tackle them. If not, they'll just bump over to our next call. So um, if you haven't already signed in, the Etherpad link is there in the chat. If you could go ahead and sign in, please. And um, we'll start off with a few announcements. So uh, I'm happy to announce that SakaiCon registration is open for this um, this year. So it's going to be July 18th and 19th. And it's primarily, um, well, it, it's both online and in person, We're, but we have some face-to-face -face only content and that's going to happen in Ann Arbor. So if you would like to attend the in-person event, we, we encourage you to do so. There will be a, a large percentage of the material that's also available online. Um, so if you can't attend and you just have to attend virtually, that's fine too. Um, we will have plenty of programming for those folks. Um, registration is free. But we do ask that people register because if you're coming in person, we need to know kind of the headcount to plan for on-site activities. And if you're not attending, we need an email knowing that you're attending so that we know where to send the login information and stuff. So please register if you do plan to attend either in person or online. And um, I see that Josh has pasted the, um, the draft program in there. We're still tweaking it. Um, I know I'm, I owe him some <laughs> session information, so we'll be getting that posted um, shortly, but you can get a general idea of, of what's going to be happening over those two days. Um, so hopefully you can plan to be there with us uh, this summer at SakaiCon. Um, all right, are there any other announcements before we move into our other agenda items? Okay, um, so let's go ahead and uh, start off with our S2U update from Miguel and his team. Miguel, do you need um, screen share? Yeah, sure. All right, so I just made you presenter. Okay. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna make a demo. I mean, we're gonna make a demo for today. Um, I wanna mention the that all the the entire S two U project has been has been funded by the. Uh, generation funds from the European Union, the Spanish government, um, and, and these universities that put together all the effort to, to get the appropriate funding to improve Sakai. And uh, everything that is going to be uh, demoed today is still released in the, in the QA site. It is a dedicated server based on Sakai 22. So if any if any institution has Sakai 22, may think about experimenting or adopting one of these features because they are being tested or already tested. So feel free to go in using the usual credentials and, and feel free to test it and play around with the features shown in this demo. So for today, we have a big pile of items to demo, but today we're gonna focus only on three of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the first two ones. One is based on the raster tool and the other one is based on tests and quizzes. And the last one is gonna be a new tool, uh, which is the meetings tool integrated with Microsoft Teams. Uh, Paco, which is in the call, is gonna demo that feature. So I'm gonna start with the first one, which is the card game 
If anyone has any question, feel free to contact any of these addresses, Sakai Spanish at Iberia.org or sakaigers at idf.global. Or feel free to, to, to ask questions or interrupt me if you need more, more information. So the first the first demo I'm gonna I'm gonna make is in the raster tool and we call it a, is a new game which is the name the name that face. So basically in in UPB there's a problem with huge number of users in a course because instructors usually have problems to know the students well or to understand the names of the students. So they, some teachers of the university requested to put a game in the roster to challenge and, and, and invite the, the instructors to guess the student names so they can play with the photos, with the official photos. The intention of this development is to, to use the official, the official photos in the roster and try to guess the student name based on the photo. So basically we added a new tab which is the name that face and inside we find the game. So right now this site has only 10 students and me as an instructor, I'm able to access the tool and play with the game. So basically um, this is the default photo when there's no official photo, but we tested with official photos and the face of the student is displayed here. So basically we have a a uh, select with all the students and we need to guess the name of the student. So this is pretty easy because we can find by Z and it's Zachary. So I'm going to check. It displays a sound. We can turn off the sound if you, we don't want the sound, but it shows another student. So this is harder because it's zero. So we can, for example, choose this and then and I failed. Okay. This is also tricky because there are many students with similar name. I'm gonna fail. This is easy because it's AA, so Albert Albertson. And uh, maybe I can, if I got a right answer, then I can I can skip this user for future rounds. So I'm gonna skip it. So I learned one student name. Okay. We can also re-roll a student if we don't feel confident. For example, this one is also pretty easy and they can check it and I can ignore it. So at the end, when you complete all the games, all the students, I'm sorry, then you learned the name of the students pretty well for this site. And you can also reset the game, which resets everything and you can play again. So that's the idea of, the, of this feature for the roster tool. So, Name that face is the English name for the tool and is open to, to future changes if the community thinks that there's a better name for the game. Um, any question about the tool? So is, if you have multiple instructors in the course, does it, um, is it individual? Like if one instructor plays and learns five names, a different instructor goes in and they'll get from scratch, right? Yep. All the all the uh, all the attempts are attached to this to the user, to the instructor, and the student. So if you have a student in multiple sites, uh, it uses the same data, and multiple instructors in the same site or different sites have different different attempts and different data. And it's based on it's been, it's based on the number of attempts and the number of, of correct options. So a user is considered is considered guest if in five attempts you guessed more than fifty percent of the time. And that values can be can be configurable. I mean, you can make the game harder by properties, establishing a global policy like you need to guess. I don't know in ten attempts eight times, for example. Make sense what I said? Yes, thank you. Okay. So uh, I, I just want to say that, uh, I mean, the all the analysis and the designs were done um, during the analysis phase. So right now, uh, the um, all the requests, I mean, analysis and, 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 and new requirements are closed. So it, it would be good to provide this feedback for future releases of the of this game, but this is 
this is done according to the to the project scope okay so we consider future future requirements for you know newer versions of the game okay about looks like the there's next... a question in the chat from hank uh he wants to know if students can opt out for privacy reasons this is to, to me to add an option students who this the students i don't think the students have freedom to to choose the photo because it's an official policy to use the official photos so there's a global policy and uh, in Sakai and the official photo is included in the raster. Uh, can students opt out for privacy reasons? Mm, no, no, but as I said, I think this, this is covered by, you know, all the membership. And I think it's, it's, it's everything restricted to the course and, and I mean, there's no specific treatment about privacy reasons because as I said, it's an official photo. And I don't think right. well, the instructor is the only person that can play, right? Students can't play. Yeah, correct. St students can't play. Only instructors. Yes, correct. It's a game for instructors. Students cannot play. Yeah. Miguel, it, it, but, there, it is an interesting potential edge case. I mean, there might be countries in which students have the ability to opt their official photo. Uh, out of the roster for their instructor in their course. I mean, I'm I'm finding it hard to imagine that, but I couldn't rule it out either. So just something to, to keep in mind for future. Yeah, well, the entire roster then is affected. I mean, this is nothing new because the entire Sakai lacks of this. So it respects the permissions. This means that if you adjust the permissions, then the user is not able to access the photo. So I think it also applies to Rasta. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Anyway, everyone is welcome to play with the game and, and, and participate on the JIRAs because the JIRAs are open. This is S to you. Um, what was the name? S to you 42. Okay. About the next one, S to you 15. This is intestine quizzes. Um, for to demo this, to demo this, I created an exam and I submitted three submissions. So it's a big course with several several students. So right now, when you click on one of the submissions, you have the capacity, and this is uh, this is pretty consistent with the grader. You have the capacity to go to different submissions without going back again so right now in sakai this doesn't exist in 22 you have to go to the bottom you have to cancel you have to go to the next student and click it so right now we added this so you can move between submissions easily so you can go to the z and you can go to the a without going back to the list and going to the a full list of students so improves the navigation between submissions in test and quizzes so this is pretty easy to to test and pretty easy to demo. Any question about this new feature? Thank you. You are you're invited to, to test it and play around with it. I mean, you can go, just create one exam with only one question, provide, I don't know, 100 submissions. The good thing is we tested this with 400 submissions, a big, big number of submissions, and it saves a lot of time and it performs really well when dealing with big number of submissions. So it saves a lot of time for instructors. So you can go to the to the to this to the student directly without going for you know long, long, long list of students like now that you have to go to cancel and is a long list of students, then you can save a lot of time. Okay. And now I'm going to assign permissions to Paco. Miguel, so I have gonna... a quick question about that feature. Yeah. What does it do when a student has multiple submissions? It goes to the most recent one. Okay. Yeah. There's a priority. When you go to total scores, there's a priority. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the priority based on the highest grade or the most recent grade, I think. Do you see my screen? Yeah. I think there's a selector here, which is yeah highest of all submissions. So it goes to the highest or the most recent one. If okay. you go to the highest, it's the highest ranked. And if you go to all submissions, it sorts by date. OK, so it will go through all of them depending on what's selected for that list. Correct. However, I'm going to ask that in the ticket so you get an official response. OK. okay. That's really we'll nice. Good to... Thank you. And I'm going to sign Paco permissions, I think. Paco, do you have access? As moderator? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the point is. Let me help you. Share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, um, well, as Miguel told before, uh, as part of the Microsoft integration, the the next step we have to develop a, a site tool, and this tool will allow us to um, manage and create uh, online online meetings, Microsoft online meetings. Okay, this is the or QA server, and this is a teacher, and this is the student student view. So in the in the meetings tool, we can of course create a new meeting meeting, for example, description. Okay, here we are allowed to set for said uh, permission for all students or all users in the site or just to select a different groups here we establish the the publication dates from where where are uh, from when to when are is open also we can add this this meeting in the sakai calendar and finally we can notify all the the students all the users in, in or the affected user participants with the uh, sakai notification okay I create here the the meeting and if i refresh the student view i i can see this this meeting in both cases if i join you need to to know that of course uh, when i join i i'm using the microsoft uh, login that i'm using in, in this moment in this case this is the same user as in in sakai the same from in in this browser so cases i join Join. Okay. In this case, yes, because if not, I have some echo. Uh, this is the repeat. This is the student, so this user is not able to to record the the meeting. This one is the uh, the teacher, the, the manager, so is able to record. So I can start. Yeah, I'm recording this meeting now. And after just a couple of seconds, I can this notify in the in the other browser. Just stop my recording 
and when the recording is ready, it's ready now. So, well, I can exit if you want. Same here. And now we can, put this is the difference between the, the, the teacher can edit this meeting, get the link to using another tool, or check the recordings, and of course remove this 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 meeting. the The student is only allowed to check the recordings. In this case, okay, here is the the record. Uh, just to know, this is a very course. This tool is just has one one meeting. If I want to show you my local my local server, okay, in this server, it's the same. And just to notice, um, because we can have a lot of meetings uh, for the same site, and it's going to group in different uh, according to the to the time. So the the the, the the past meetings are not able to join, and the meetings in the future will be joinable, but of course in the future. And I think that's all. Now we can check and I think we can edit. I think that's all. What or or, or or tool does. Any question? It looks really nice. Exciting to see some of those um, designs get implemented. Very cool. Does anybody else have any questions? I just want to mention that all the Microsoft integrations with the tools is is based on multiple multiple functionalities um which is the membership synchronization first i mean there's a functionality that integrates microsoft with users groups sites teams channels etc all the sakai objects with microsoft objects then this tool microsoft teams is using that integration that permissions to get the recordings to display the right information to the right people because there's, uh, as I said, uh, a similar structure in Microsoft and a similar structure in Sakai. And there's new new coming developments for OneDrive, streams, and inline documents that are going to be based on, on the groups. Paco is showing uh, right now the Microsoft admin tool with deals with this synchronization. So unfortunately, unfortunately you cannot have the Microsoft Teams integration without other pieces because membership, users, channels, teams are required. So we made Sakai more in, integrated with the Microsoft um, Office 365 services. All right, great. Well, thank you so much for showing us those features i know there'll be more next time um, but it's always exciting to see the new stuff as it comes out so um, again if you're interested in in playing around with some of these a little bit more um, there's that uh, link to the the s2u um, test server where people can go and test things out and uh, these enhancements are on a, a 22 branch um, for the Spanish universities. So it's, they're not necessarily going into 23. So that's just important to keep in mind. Um, but we hope to incorporate some of these into 24. Um, so they'll be hopefully brought back into the course of Kai, but a little bit later. So just so people have it straight with 23 coming out this summer. Um, it's sort of happening in parallel to a lot of these updates for the STU project. 
Um, okay, so we ran over a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I'd rather have more to talk about than <laughs> not enough. So that's a good problem to have. So we'll go ahead and move into our demo of back chat. And, um, and Hank, take as much time as you need. If we run out of time, I can always bump the specifications grading to our next call. That's not a problem. Um, I don't want you to feel like you're uh, under pressure to, to talk quickly. So let me go ahead and Thank find you. Hank in the list yeah, well, here. That's okay. a dangerous thing to say. I'm a lecturer <laughs> for four hours. I mean. All right. Well, we only have until noon. So <laughs> you have a, 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 a final cutoff there. But other than, um, I've given you presenters, so you should be able to share your screen now. Okay, I'm just trying to get to the right one. There we go. Okay, so I'm not, I, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation for you. I'm just um, showing you the Backchat interface. Just before I get started, like I said, I'm a lecturer and um, I deal with large student groups. Um, Miguel mentioned groups of 400. I dealt with groups of 400 last year. I was the only lecturer marking their stuff. So that's quite a lot of marking I had to do. And I teach um, second language writing in English. Uh, which is not my first language and neither is it for my students. So I want to be able to communicate with them uh, and explain to them certain concepts in a, in a way that's a lot more effective than just uh, typing it out. And I wanted to do voice notes. So we created Backchat as a way to do that. And the screen you can see here is the, the marking interface. So um, I I've already set up my class list and my marking rubric. I'm not going to add an intern ending, but um, I can immediately start marking. So if I need to, I've, I've done a few. This is just the sample list, right? So this is not an actual student. Um, this is jumbled. It's not an actual student um, class list, but that's the grade book list that I got from, from Sakai. And I incorporated that into Backchat so I can start marking. So if I want to mark this student, this is what I get. On this side here, I've got a marking rubric where I can just add my marks. And um, I, I can also, um, oh, well, if I go over, if I want to add 14, I get a, I get a message from that. But I don't think not... we're seeing, we're not seeing a spreadsheet. We're seeing the, the screen that says SAMP has like the, the path to the file. And then there's a button, but we're not seeing button. like a spreadsheet. Uh, you're not supposed to see a spreadsheet. Uh, can you show me again what do you see? Um, it's a, a screen that says test version across the top, and there's uh, sample. I just want to make sure you were in the right window. I am in the, oh, you know what? Uh, it opens in a new window. So how do I share? I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. How do I share my my complete window not i'm going to share the entire screen okay, i'm going to share the entire screen that will probably work better i uh, just want to see what you see now and you should be able to see a list now right yes yes we're seeing right, a list. awesome all right okay so this is where i start marking i select my student to mark if i open that there, I forgot it opens in the new window. Sorry. So um, here's my marking rubric on this side, and I can add marks and um, uh, I can add pictures, and tables, and everything here. But the actual thing why I wanted to create this was to to mark for um, with voice notes. So I just added a few here in terms of referencing. If I'm teaching my students how to do referencing, so these here on this side. Uh, recordings of 55 seconds, 27 seconds, 26 seconds, and so on. And with a double click, I insert them. So I did three recordings, and these are generic feedback comments. So, for example, if I see a student has many errors in, um, in the reference list, then I just add that. Now, in 26 seconds, I can explain to the student the basics of referencing. Uh, I'm speaking at a comfortable pace now that's about 200 words a minute. So obviously in half a minute, that's about 100 words of feedback. Now, I'm not sure what you got from your lectures, but that's more feedback than I ever got on any single one of my assignments while I was an undergraduate. And that's just the one comment. Now, to add on to that, I can also do a custom comment. So custom comment, it will immediately tell me it's according for which student. 
I can start recording. I can talk to the student as long as I want to. And then when I'm done, I stop, save the recording, return, and it's immediately inserted into the student's recording list. And then I can move these around any way I want to. I add my marks. I can flag the student for issues if there are any issues. And then I can save it and return, and this list here will be updated. Once I'm done with all of that, I can export the whole list. What an export will do is it will, um, it will take all of those little audio files and combine them into one single audio file. I don't want to upload 5 or 10 or 15 MP3 files to the student's uh, Dropbox on Ifumi. I want the student to get one single uh, file. So once the export is done, this is what I will get. And these here, in these folders, I've got the student's MP3 and I've also got the student's um, marking scheme. So the marking scheme, if I open that on a, um, in, it, will, it will open as an HTML file in whichever browser they're using. And what you'll see here, your referencing sucks, but here, I, well, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I, I wrote it in the wrong place. Your referencing sucks. I can write whatever I want because the students won't see it. That was, I, I put that in the wrong block on the marking scheme. So I need to check that before I mark. But in my marking scheme, I can actually write a few notes to myself when I should use it. And those the students will not see, but I actually didn't type it in the wrong one here. <laughs> so that's my silly mistake. Um, once I'm done marking all of these and I've got my, um, I've got my list of uh, student output here, I can go to, um, to my Fundi site. I just need to log in quickly. I'm on a, on a separate screen here. And um, then it's a drag and drop function to get all of that to um, to the. Um, let me just get the right screen and show you. I've got a dummy site here for illustration purposes. So I will go to my Dropbox, and here when I do the upload files, I will actually just do this. I will take all of these, drag and drop, and then. Um, now I will sort all of those into each individual's Dropbox for them. So that's already saving me time as a lecturer because I don't need to, to um, hand out everything to students. I don't need to send it to them. And um, it's, a, it's a kind of a push action. Now, if I go back to this list here, I've got a few, um, I've got a few files here at the bottom as well. The one is just a class list without names. That's just student numbers. So I can print that out. I can give that to students on a notice board if I want to. I've also got the full class list and I've got my full data. Now the data is where it gets fun. I'm not going to show you the Excel sheet now. That will take some time. But um, in, um, in Backchat itself, I've also got my statistics here. Now here I've got just my histogram of marks. I've also got my results per rubric section. I've got the average for the students, and here, down here, I will see which recordings I used most. Now, any lecturer will tell you that the moment you start marking for a group of 20 to 30 students, at least 60% of them will make the same mistakes. And here, I've actually got a list of which those were. So I know where the most of my students made mistakes. I've got some statistics that I can use there. Now, um, I can show you how to do a full setup of this, but I don't think that's the point here. The setup, if I go to home, the module here is where I start with my modules. So I can say what my modules are, and I can add my assignments to them. With the recordings, I can make recordings available for all assignments, for specific um, modules, unassigned recordings, recordings available for every, every single thing. And I can add categories and flags and tags and all sorts of um, all sorts of data tags that I can use to to um, to enhance my data chunking ability when I'm done. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, it's a it's still a test version at the moment, and it's mostly aimed at people with quite large classes. But I must admit I use it sometimes with small classes as well. Uh, with smaller classes, I won't always go for um, pre-recordings. In those cases, I will simply do voice notes um, or custom comments. Uh, okay, so I think I'm under 15 minutes. I, like I said, I can keep you busy for four hours, but that's pretty much where I think I should stop. Just, um, I, want, I had a, 
this is the picture I normally show people if I don't have my computer with me. I've got my custom comments, the reusable generic comments, uh, and the individualized custom comments. And I can insert them any way I want, combines it for me into one single audio file, and then I can send to students. Okay, I think that's where I stop. That's um, very cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm curious, this is a, a program that runs on your local machine, correct? Yes, we did that so that you don't have to be online all the time. Um, I'm in Africa, so we don't always have electricity, we don't always have internet, and um, it's slightly slower if you do audio recordings online. But we also started working on this quite a while ago, so I don't know if that's still as relevant. But the idea is that it's an executable, you put it on your own computer and you've got your data with you and you can upload that. Great. And do you ever run into problems with file size, like when you do your upload? Um, no, it actually not. Does it them pretty well? Yes, it does. So um, it works on WAV files uh, initially. But once the compression is done, it will reduce it to an MP3. And um, let me just see if I can show you the file size for one of those. Uh, so this one was 3 megs, so it's not really a big file. And that should be about 5 to 7 minutes of audio already in there. So once again, if I speak at about 200 words a minute, in 5 minutes my students will get more feedback than they sometimes actually submit it in words to me. So, so I can do quite a lot of teaching in it. So my idea how I usually use it is I'll have a, a generic comment on a specific error type and then underneath that I will add a specific instance for the student. Let me give you an example. Um, if I pick up an ambiguous sentence, I'll have a voice note telling the student your sentence is ambiguous, ambiguity is caused by one, two, three, these things. And then underneath that I will do a custom comment and I will say, your sentence that bothered me is in, and I'll give them the paragraph or the, the, um, the numbered section where it is, and I will tell them to go and find out how they can improve that. So um, is this something that when you install a, a fresh version of it, does the individual instructor need to populate all those comments or does it come with any kind of canned uh, comments already. We can't really send it with canned comments because then it will be different voices speaking. So mm -hmm. um, you'll have to do your comments the first time around. But to give you an idea, if I've got, um, if I get a new kind of assignment or new class group and I expect a different, a new kind of, a new combination of errors, to record about 30, or 30 to 50 comments will take me anything between half an hour and 45 minutes, but it will save me much, much more time than that. Because remember, um, I can just double click and insert. So if I do my comments, my pre-recorded comments well enough, based on my experience, for some assignments, I don't need to do custom recordings at all, because I can give the students instructions just based on what everybody else did on as well. Now, as you're recording, um, say you're creating a custom comment and you want to use that as a generic comment, can it kind of be tagged as yes. Uh, reusable? Yes. So if I do that, if I decide I want to use it instead of a custom, I will just click on new recording. So by the time I do the second custom recording on the same topic, then I won't do it as a new custom. I'll do it as a new recording. And the new recording I can uh, add to the category, so we're busy with referencing, I'll focus on referencing, I'll add that to the specific module, the sample module, and I can add it to a specific assignment or to all assignments, I can set a flag, the referencing issues, and then I will record it and save it and I can use it again and again and again. So you don't need to do everything before you start, as you, as you pick up, as you go along, there's something you need a recording for, you can just add that as well. I'm not going to do this one now. Changes have not been saved. Yes, so we can close. So I know I've been so, asking lots of questions. Do other folks have questions? Please feel free to type them into the chat. Or, yeah. Give people a moment to think about it. <laughs> um, um, 
So if we wanted to try this, is there a place we could go to download the program? Is it uh, well, open source? Uh, it's not open source at the moment. We're trying to test it. University wants to see if they can get somebody who wants to take it further. Um, you can send me an email and uh, we can make an arrangement. Come on. I'm talking my email address in the, in the chat. The reason why I'm here today is because I want you to test it. Uh, well, we need some user feedback. We want to know what features people would want and how they would implement it. And um, we, need, we need a test population. I mean, we've got people here using it, but we've got a different context to, to other universities. So we want people to test it. Okay, great. Well, so for those of you on the call, if you're at all interested in testing this out, um, please, you know, uh, let Hank know, or you can contact me and I'll put you in touch with him. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it'd be great to uh, get some folks kind of kicking the tires a little bit to see if it might be useful at other institutions as well. It looks pretty interesting. It, it saves me time and it saves me a lot of frustration. Yeah. So I'd, I'd really like to see people, uh, more people using it. And um, just one more mention there. I haven't read one single article, academic article, on the use of audio feedback that was negative about it. Uh, in every single one, they tell us that the students appreciate it more, they like it more, and it's more effective, more efficient, more clear, lots and lots of advantages. And um, the nice thing about this one, I did an experiment with my students once, they don't realize that they're listening to video recordings. They think I did the recording just for them. So it, it, it's, it's an, they think they get very individualized attention, but I've got 400 scenes a shot, so I can't give individual attention to all of them. If you need to give 10 minutes of your time to every single student in the 400 student class, that's not possible. This massification of of universities, it's not possible to give that level of attention to your students unless you do something like this. That's a very good point. Yeah, and hearing the instructor's voice kind of personalizes the experience for the student. So it's useful in that way. They, they see you as a person as opposed to just somebody sending them uh, comments uh, more anonymously in text. So. Yeah, and you can also, I mean, they can hear your inflection in your voice as well. And sometimes I actually need to, to act. I mean, if they mess up and they commit plagiarism, I, I, I'm talking to somebody that's not even there and I need to scold them. But um, I'll, I'll do some acting and it works. So but I'm curious, I know that this is um, designed to work with the Dropbox and it makes sense because of the way you're dragging and dropping the files. I'm just wondering if it ever occurred to you to integrate it at all with the gradebook, because um, that's another place where comments are sometimes used. Uh, the, the Excel sheet that is downloaded for the marks is supposed to be able to be uploaded just to the gradebook, so at least you update the marks and you don't have to do that manually. Uh, when we started mm -hmm. developing this, the gradebook was actually, it, it, it didn't exist at that point. It was mark books still. Um, so that's how long we've been working on it, but I've never had the, just the idea to mention this to Sakai Foundation to see if other people would be interested. Uh, I've also, ex I was expecting a question, why don't we integrate this with the assignments tab? Uh, yeah, that would be the next question. <laughs> yeah, and Jennifer looks like she anticipated it too. Um, assignments yeah. would be in a logical spot. Yeah, well, at, at the point when we started doing this, assignments wasn't the logical spot because at that point, if I had to do the reporting for Steam to submit it, not on the assignments, uh, but maybe a hard copy, then um, I, I couldn't do the reporting and upload it for. So also remember, I don't always just use this for assignments. I sometimes use it for just plain communication with my students. So if um, for some reason I'm, I miss a lesson or I need to send out an announcement to individuals, then I can quickly do a few recordings and send that out to everybody. And um, that's sort of an instruction for them. So I don't want to be limited by just using the assignment step. I've got, you know, for example, I've got a, uh, and a colleague at the MBA school who will send out short little voice note lessons to all his students 
Um, and that's not an assignment from their side. So he just wants to be able to communicate with them in voice. Okay, great. Well, that, that's a definitely a good point. Um, does anybody have any other questions for Hank? Yeah, I see I'm a lecture. I put them all to sleep. <laughs> well, thank you so much for showing <laughs> showing us this. This is um this is very interesting. Um, I'm gonna kind of take it away and let it percolate a little bit, but maybe there's something we can do to try to tie it in, or at least get some other folks trying it out to see if it's useful for them. So yeah, we really appreciate you reaching thank out you, and. You. Um, We'll be in touch. It looks like we are running a little short on time, so I'm going to bump the um, specifications grading discussion to our next call, um, just so we have plenty of time to um, to dive into that. Um, we do have 10 minutes left, though, so um, we can probably call um, a JIRA or two in that time. So um, why don't we go ahead and let me take back presenter. Um, why don't we look at this first one here and I'll paste it into chat as well. Uh, share my screen. Okay. So this one is, um, looks like it's one of Christina's. Assignments as a gradebook item score does not flow back to assignments. Um, Christina, do you want to summarize that one for us? Um, sure. And I don't know if this is what is, I'm not sure what's the expected behavior. But in the case of you have an assignment linked to an existing gradebook item, if you put a score in, to the assignments tool, it flows back into gradebook. But if the instructor goes and puts the score directly in gradebook, should it flow back into assignments? I would think that it would, because you wouldn't want there to be two different grades. It should be one grade, regardless of where it's entered. Yeah. Well, right now, if the instructor puts the score in gradebook, the associated assignment shows not graded, no score, no feedback. Yeah, that seems like a problem. <laughs> um, so I, I hope that this will be addressed when the centralized gradebook um, is sort of hooked into handling the scoring for assignments. Um, because the intention of that is that the same, you know, lo location where grades are stored and, and managed is being used in all the tools that, that display those grades, like assignments and grade books. So they would both be kind of pointing to the same origin. Um, but I don't know how quickly that's going to, to take place. I know that Adrian was working on a lot of, um, centralized gradebook service uh, features for 23, but I don't know if it's if it's if it's going to handle this particular issue yet. I mean, I don't see it being the most common use case. I think most instructors mm -hmm. are going into gradebook, but or not into gradebook, but into assignments to enter the score. But if they do go into gradebook, assignments doesn't recognize that a score was entered. Right. Oh, and Adrian says not for 23, too many blockers, <laughs> so it won't be fixed that soon. But but yeah, that does seem like a, a, an issue to me that they should flow both ways. Um, because you could attempt uh, uh, potentially get inconsistent information and that would be confusing to a student. If they go into one place and they don't see a score and they go somewhere else, they see a different score. Um, I don't think they'd ever see, well, I can't say that. If they end, if the instructor put a score in assignments and then went into gradebook and changed it, then they'd see two different scores. Yeah. 
Adrian, that's because you're not making it work exactly how we're envisioning it to work <laughs> with absolute magic. Yeah, you have to you know, get your mind on and <laughs> let's see. Jennifer says mm -hmm. um, our faculty check the option first time is to go to gradebook so they can't enter the gradebook. Yeah, that that's the option I recommend to people as the preferred way to add the gradebook item because otherwise you run into those kinds of problems with mismatching information. I've got an instructor who just doesn't like the recommended way and yeah, just yeah some people it. actually exploit that for various reasons <laughs> like you know they like having it uh, copy over and already be in a category, you know, or they they like entering grades in the grade book better than going into the assignments to enter grades. So, you know, for various reasons, people will sometimes do that on purpose, but I, I try to encourage them not to use the more standard method. So does anybody else have any other thoughts on how this should work? Um, is it fair to say that this is uh, a problem and should be corrected? You guys are quiet today. All right, well, I will add a note with my opinion at any rate, <laughs> that I think they should stay the same. Um, if anybody wants to, uh, you know, add a, a dissenting opinion, you're certainly welcome. Um, but I'll go ahead and update that JIRA with, with some preliminary feedback at any rate. And hopefully we can get it sorted after Adrian is is past some of the blockers, and um, we can uh, we can try to get some of this sorted out after twenty three is out the door. So, um, all right. Well, it looks like we are about out of time. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up today. I don't think five minutes is really enough time to give justice to another Jira. So. We um, will be meeting again on the 17th in two weeks. So hopefully you will join us then and we'll be talking about the specifications, non-numeric grading stuff um, in a little more detail. And then we'll also have some time for, for JIRAs next time. So uh, hopefully um, you'll join us then and have a great rest of your week. Thanks everybody. <laughs>